Okay, so there's a number of reasons why this curve wouldn't work very well with a one-part mold, and one of the main reasons is that I want to make multiples of this curve, so it's just not going to, it's not in my interest time-wise to constantly be using a bendy, bendy ply call and using all those clamps. I just want to be able to clamp it up and forget it and then switch out the parts once the glue is dried. So another reason is that because this is bent all the way around in a half circle, um, to create adequate clamping pressure, I'm gonna to have to be drilling quite a few holes um, for the clamps to attach to the mold. Uh, and because it's only a 10 inch diameter circle, I'm gonna be quickly running out of surface area to drill holes for my clamps. So it's in my interest to change this mold to either a two part mold or a vacuum mold. Uh, and in my case, I've decided to do a two part mold because a two part mold will allow more exposure to the air uh, because I'll, I'm planning on using wood glue. So it will dry the glue more rapidly uh, a two-part mold will only require a minimal amount of clamps. Uh, and because this is a fairly dramatic curve, because it bends around uh, all the way around uh, in only 10 inches, um, I don't want to risk the bag not having an adequate amount of stretch to bend around this. And I also don't want to have to make a custom platen for the bag. There's a number of ways to make a two-part mold. Uh, so the first thing to consider is that, say I cut out a piece, I'm just going to trace my curve with a pencil. Say I cut out a piece that was the exact opposite of this curve. Now, intuitively, that makes a lot of sense uh, just because you're making a mating part for this mold. Uh, but in reality, because the thickness of the veneer is actually changing the radius of this curve, I actually need to make an offset curve rather than an, um, the exact copy of the curve. Here is some veneer just for thickness. And if I line this guy up, you can see that as this veneer will bend around my master template, it's going to add 3 eighths of thickness to my curve, meaning that my negative piece or my female piece of the mold will have to be 3 eighths offset all the way around from my master template. So how should I do this? Um, the most old-fashioned and low-tech way is to use something like a washer uh, and to run the outside diameter of the washer along the edge of my master template and then put my pencil, place my pencil in the center of the washer and that will tighten it to a fixed offset from my mold. And this is really useful if you don't want to spend a lot of time making your two-part mold. You just want to be able to rough it out on the bandsaw and then finish it on the belt sander. Um, as you might have guessed, the main disadvantage of this method is that I have a limited selection of washer sizes, especially if I don't want to go out and buy a washer specifically for this project. I only have what's on hand. And I believe in this case, this washer, it's actually pretty close to what I want. Uh, it's 0 0.4130 inches. I want, if I measure this bundle of veneer, 0 0.3865. So it's pretty unlikely that I'll find this washer, the exact dimension of the washer that I want. But if I do happen to find a washer that's the thickness of the veneers I wanna bend, this is a really quick and easy way to make a two-part mold. The most high-tech solution to making a mating surface for your mold is to use CAD, uh, to use the CNC. So 
because using the computer, uh, you're creating, you're basically telling the CNC where it is at all time. It's really, it's just a single command to create an offset line. And you can customize exactly how, how thick that offset line should be. So these pieces of veneer, in theory, are a 16th of an inch. Um, but when I bundle six of them together, which should be 3 eighths of an inch, which is 0.375, in reality, they're actually 0.385. So that's where using CAD and using the CNC is going to be incredibly useful because I can customize those thickness based off the sizing of the veneer that I buy. So. I try to encourage people as often as possible when they're doing a two-part mold to first buy your veneer and measure it with a digital caliper before you make your, your mating part of your mold. Sometimes it's just not an option because you're too pressed for time, but in an ideal world, that's what you would do. Um, so we have the super low-tech washer, super high-tech using CAD and the CNC. And happily, there is a medium option that's not too high tech, uh, that should be accessible to most of you that have like a rudimentary shop set up at home. Uh, and that's gonna be using bushings. So this is an example of a bushing. Uh, it's a universal fit onto any plunge router uh, or typically onto any router table. Uh, because I do not have a plunge router, I'm gonna be trying to do this on my router table but I would recommend using a plunge router because then you'll actually be able to see your template the entire time instead of going in blind like I will be doing. Uh, but you can see that the, the bushing uh, has this, it has an inside diameter and outside diameter. It's actually incredibly accurate. This one, the outside diameter is 5 eighths of an inch. And if I measure that with my digital caliper, it's 0.624. So it's a single thousandth of an inch off. So it's very accurate compared to the thickness of my veneers. So the outside diameter of this bushing will be running along my master template. And on the inside of the bushing will be a standard straight router bit. So there's a bit of, a, there's a bit of math involved to try to figure out the exact offset. And as you might have guessed, you are limited by your sizes of bushings and by your sizes of router bits. In my case, um, I've done the math ahead of time. I'm gonna be using this quarter inch router bit. And I didn't necessarily trust it to be exactly of a quarter of an inch. So I used my digital caliper to double check. Uh, and it's pretty close, 2.48. So I'm going to show you a diagram. I think this will make more sense once you see it in person. But this is the base of the router. This is the bushing, which I've exaggerated its size to make it a little bit more clear. This is the edge of the template that it will be running against. And this is your router bit on the center. So when I use the bushing, I'm going to be creating the offset curve from my mold, which will be the outside diameter, diameter of my router bit. So this is a little bit confusing, but basically what it breaks down to is that if I add half the diameter of my bushing with half the diameter of my router bit, that's going to calculate where the outside diameter of my router bit will be cutting. So, if I wanted close to 3 eighths of an inch, half the diameter of a quarter inch router bit is an eighth of an inch. Um, and then I want my final thickness to be 3 eighths of an inch. So I need whatever it will take to make this 3 eighths of an inch total, which will be a quarter of an inch, which means my bushing is going to have a quarter inch radius or it will have a half inch diameter. I know this is pretty confusing and I didn't explain it very well, but hopefully with repetition, it will eventually make sense to you. 
Um, so I'm going to be using an outside diameter half inch bushing and a quarter inch router bit to create a 3 8 inch offset from my master template. 